So, Russell Heiss, Chief Economist of Davies, thank you very much for talking to us. And uh, Can I kick off by asking you how you found your work on the Tourism Renewal Group and did you learn stuff about tourism that you didn't know already? Yeah, I, did. I very much enjoyed the, the work and um, you know, I think the, the public service element was something I, that, that I thoroughly did enjoy. I suppose what I learned about tourism was that I, mean, I think it's an underrated sector, really, um, and probably doesn't get the attention it deserves, particularly in the context when we're looking at, at Ireland and looking at our indigenous sectors. Yeah. Um, but not only that, the fact that it has ten tentacles right across um, right across the country, and uh, you know, it isn't exclu isn't exclusive to any area. I just feel that from a public policy perspective. I think we, we should probably be focusing on it a little bit more and, and that's why getting involved in the group, if, if our report in some way helps to uh, get tourism out there a little bit sure. more, I think we'd have done, it, done our job. Terrific, terrific. Lots of competitiveness of course has been a big problem for the Irish economy and indeed for tourism also. Uh, do you think we're making progress in this area? I think we've made a lot of pro progress. At, you know, I mean, budget has contributed to, to that, and also the what, what we've done on the public finances in general. But if if you, if you park that for a second, if you look at say wage costs in Ireland, we get the figures for the whole economy very soon. I think you'll find that wages are down, certainly in the three to four percent range over the last year. Um, we have seen our price level close the gap finally with with Europe um, by about three percentage points so far. Big improvement versus the UK, where our price level has closed the gap by about five percentage points. Yeah. Now, the only problem is, of course, that sterling has gone the wrong way for us. Sure. But at some point, um, when sterling does begin to strengthen again, we will see the benefits of that. So overall, I think we're, we're in this process where the cost base of the economy is yeah. uh, gradually coming down. And the important thing about the budget was that we're looking to bring our public cost base down, and I think that will feed through to cost in the rest of the economy. Sure, that's good to hear. Staying with uh, Britain, which is our largest market, and of course we took a fairly big hit this year, down 15% on visitor numbers and revenue down a little bit more than that. How do you see the British economy uh, recovering, and uh, what's your take on sterling? Yeah, the economy was a little bit disappointed that the UK didn't pull out a recession in the third quarter. Yeah. Um, they would probably be one of the last European economies actually to pull out a recession, um, albeit that the, the decline was marginal. I think the UK it, it enjoyed a, a fabulous decade really up to 2007, not only pretty decent growth in, in, in the range of, of close to 3% over that period, but very stable. I think looking ahead, um, given the constraints on the public finance side, and yeah. they have a big job to do there, and also a banking system that is, is being nursed back to health, but uh, is, is not quite in the shape it should be in, yeah. I think there will be some constraints on growth over the next five to six years. So I can see the UK economy recovering, but you're probably going to see a trend pace of growth uh, around about closer to the 2% mark rather than okay. the 3% it enjoyed okay. before. On sterling, um, there's no doubt that sterling is undervalued if you, if you look at on, on a fair value basis, whether you include the, the tests from uh, going back to the time they looked at joining the euro um, or in taking it trying to equate price levels in the UK with other countries. But currencies can stay undervalued or overvalued for a long time, and I'm not sure we'll see the benefits of sterling strengthening until the UK properly deals with its public finance issues. Okay, good point. And the United States, where all this uh, trouble started, if you like, and where it seems to be ending first, or coming towards an end first, at least, anyway, how, how, do you, is their recovery solid? Yeah, I think the, the US recovery is, is quite solid. In fact, the data we've had recently would, would, give, you, uh, would give cause for optimism, um, particularly on the labour market, where you saw a step change Really the labour market improvement and there weren't many jobs lost in November. You saw a pick up in, in retail sales on the back of that. I think the next stage is for business investment to pick up next year which should make the, the recovery more sustainable as credit conditions ease sure. um, and we're already seeing that process begin. Sure. Um, so I think the US recovery will continue albeit that much like the UK they're not going to enjoy the kind of growth rates they enjoyed in the sure. decade up, nice. up until 2000. And the dollar? That was a, a, a more difficult one. I mean, there are public finance issues uh, in, in, in the U.S. Yes, they've corrected their trade deficit somewhat, um, but I think you know o o over time the dollar. Um, some of the Asian economies may look somewhat to diversify some of their holdings of, yeah. of U.S. dollars, and um, I think over time you could see some some, some further weakness in the in the next year. Up until the point where they again, the US gets gets more serious about their public finance issues okay. too. Okay. And briefly, the, the next two biggest markets uh, for Ireland, Germany and France. 
Yeah, I mean, co continental Europe doesn't suffer from the same imbalances that we saw causing the, the, the economic crisis, and particularly a country like Germany. Yes, some of their banks got a bit carried away, but, but fundamentally they're, they're, they're not in bad shape. And both of those economies actually pulled out of recession uh, really before the rest of Europe in the second quarter of this year. So I think recovery will be sustainable. And I, I think from, from a spending point of view, um, I don't think things will deviate too much uh, f from the past. So if we're looking at the Irish tourism market and looking at continental Europe, I think we could be reasonably optimistic over the next few years. Good, good to hear that. that. That would be the view that's held in the industry, I think, as well. And finally, I suppose, and through to many sectors of the industry, very important, the domestic economy. I mean, do you share the uh, positive views that have been expressed lately that maybe, maybe the worst is behind us, or is, have we still more pain? Yeah, well, we were actually one of, the, one of the first to revise up our forecast somewhat, and I think uh, we have to be uh, careful uh, looking at Ireland. Most of the damage was done in, the, in really in the year to the first quarter of this year. Uh, we've been in recession since then, but it's been a very moderate pace of, uh, of recession. So the economy has been stabilising. The question is when we get back to growth, and I think you will see the bottom and, and some pick up in activity, perhaps as early as, as March or April of, uh, of 2010. Growth will be sluggish throughout 2010. There are legacy issues there in the banking system and, and household debt that may constrain yeah. activity. But there's no doubt that our, our exports should get a boost as global demand firms further, and they have performed pretty well uh, as it is yeah. throughout the cycle. So I'd be reasonably optimistic that we'll get back towards uh, more robust growth in 2011. Yeah. Okay, well on that positive note, Ross, thank you for talking to us and thank you indeed for your great commitment and the tremendous amount of work that you put into the Tourism Renewal, Renewal Group. We appreciate it and it's good for the industry to have an external pair of eyes. Uh, sometimes we do too much navel-gazing ourselves, but it's good to have an independent view and thank you. Thanks, Sam.